No, it's Nick. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. No, it's Nick. And Alan, I seen that. All right. So, Nick, you have a podcast that you do with your friend Justin, right? That is a filthy lie. <laughs> that you yes, guys are friends yes, or that you do. have a podcast? Both. <laughs> uh, little column A, little column B. Yes. Uh, the Epic Film Guys. And how We're long? About you- to turn three. Three years. Happy birthday to us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, you guys do a live stream of your podcast. You do um, streaming of video games and a bunch of different stuff, right? I uh, I am a man who wears many hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Between you- the live streams, I, I I'm trying to kind of grow my presence on Twitch right now, and. Yeah, the podcast, everything else. Like, yeah, I wear many hats. Yeah. You guys just did a, was it 24 hours long? The live stream for The Cure? Live stream for The Cure was 30 hours. 30 hours. All told. Over over one weekend, it wasn't continuous. It was actually technically probably closer to like 33 hours because we played a, a role-playing game for like four, five, six hours Saturday yeah. night that went you know into the wee hours of the morning. But yeah, yeah, 30 hours. And did you guys set that up or is that with someone else that you guys partnered with? All us. Yeah. It was all us. I mean, uh, we raised the funds for the Cancer Research Institute, but uh, yeah, it was our it was our brainchild. Yeah. How'd you guys do this year? We crushed it. Yeah. <laughs> First year, we set a goal of just about uh, $2,500. Okay. We almost got halfway there and... It was kind of really, really depressing. But then this year comes around and we plan on doing the event again. And I'm like, well, let's make our goal four times bigger than it was or four times more than what we made yeah. last year. And somehow we did it. And the Cancer Research Institute, during the months of May and June, they double all donations up to $200,000. Oh, wow. And so we ended up raising over $10,000 for Cancer Research. It was It was like... It's still surreal to me. Like whenever I say it, I just don't really believe it. Yeah. No, that's super awesome. Kind of makes my brain like. <laughs> um, I caught you on Twitch. Uh, it was probably about a week ago. And I feel like yeah. I might have misled you a little bit uh, after seeing Ooh. some of your tweets about Jurassic World, which is what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> oh um because i was saying i was like hey the movie's actually not bad it uh seemed like it was made by people who are competent and i saw one of your tweets and it does not seem like you were a fan of jurassic world <laughs> is that fair to say i the first one we're talking about the first one right the second one are we talking about fallen kingdom fallen okay. kingdom yeah yeah uh i will barely not recommend it i think that Bayona almost saves his film. Uh, he, the way that he and Fuara, the cinematographer, use light in this yeah. film, they use shadow in this film, and the way that they move the camera, the the shots that they stage, there's some really beautiful stuff in this film. Mm. It's just Colin Trevorrow writes like he's four. <laughs> he's terrible. He cannot write to save his life. Yeah, and it just. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> so I went into uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the, the latest one, uh, with no, like, I had no expectations for the movie. So like I told you, I live in Thailand, so we get one movie a week that's in English, and we have like yeah. one showing a day. And so it was like, you either see the movie that's in English or you just don't go to the movies. And so I was like, <laughs> ah, I might as well, like, it'd be worth talking about. And I went in, yeah. I was like expecting to hate every second of it. And I actually hmm. enjoyed it way more than I expected. Way more than the first one, uh, Jurassic World. Uh, I hated Jurassic World. I did not like any part of that. It felt, it was so boring. And they underutilized Chris Pratt, which seemed weird. Why you'd get someone with such a strong personality and then turn them into a cardboard cutout with mascara on. And yeah. he, he just was so boring to watch. And in this one, he felt like he had more personality. Um and then there's a lot of subtle callbacks to the original. Uh, not like extremely subtle, but compared to Jurassic World where everything was slammed in your face, this one felt a little bit more 
uh, pulled back on that stuff. I would agree. I would agree. There's definitely nods that you can notice all throughout the film, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that this one doesn't necessarily try to quote unquote tingle your nostalgia boner, unquote, <laughs> whatever. But it, it's, I think the the problem with this film for me anyway is the price. The yeah, the price. The pacing is breakneck. It 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 yeah. literally steps on the gas. At somewhere around like I don't know, probably like the twenty or thirty minute mark, and it never really lets off of it. Yeah. And I mean, once again, it the same thing happened in Jurassic World, where it just I feel like what made the first film work back in nineteen ninety three was it invested you in the human characters yeah. so that you cared about them. And I don't feel like this film does that, and so I don't really care when people get eaten by dinosaurs yeah. in this movie. Well, does anyone do any of the characters that uh, in the main cast? No one dies, right? No one gets attacked. Yeah, I mean, they might get menaced slightly yeah. by dinosaurs or whatever, but no, I don't think any of them. Because in the really first, die. I mean, except for you know, we'll we'll spoil stuff later or whatever, whenever you want. Yeah, uh, the in the original one, they kind of set up. There's what ten people, and they're all they kind of give equal time. To them, yeah. and you know, you you got Samuel Jackson who dies, uh, the guy from Seinfeld who dies, the lawyer, lawyer, yep, yep, who dies. Um, oh man, why can't I think of his name? Uh, Jeff Goldblum gets attacked, gets you know damaged. Yep. The little boy gets damaged by the electric uh, electrocution. Um, yep. Ellie like twists her ankle, I think, something like that. Yeah, so everyone, everyone feels at risk. Where in this yep. one, of the main cast, you, you're you very confident that they're never in trouble. And partly... Yeah, exactly. Part of that can be given towards the trailer. I don't know if you watched any of the trailers for this before it came out, but they were yeah. awful. They gave away <laughs> so much of the story. And so if you're watching it, you're like, oh, well, Chris Pratt comes back at this point. So he clearly doesn't die here. He clearly doesn't die here. Like... He's supposed to be back in the movie later on. There's no way he's going to die. So he never felt that danger. Even one though, of the most frustrating things about movie trailers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know why they do. They allow someone else to make them. Right. It's the. Yeah. The studio shoots them. And then there's a trailer house that cuts them all together. And I guess it's effective at getting people who don't care about movies to see them. But they're, they're he really puts butts bad. In seats. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what did you think of the new characters? that they brought in the two uh social justice <sighs> they were all right if not a little kind of stereotypical like they yeah. they really just kind of gave them a an archetype to fill mm. and their characters really don't step outside of that too much you have what zaya and franklin yes are their names and yeah they really don't step outside of that box you can kind of just throw a few adjectives or throw a few kind of generic descriptors at them. And, you know, it, it, it it's simple, you know, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really develop anything, anything further than that. It doesn't really go any deeper than that. Yeah. Cause I mean, again, it, it's one of those things where it, it doesn't spend enough time with the human characters to really make you care about them enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They, the, it was worse in the <clears throat> dress world one, with the kids where they try to get you to care about them by having their parents like kind of getting divorced. They're like trying yeah, to like the worst throwaway like ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to manipulate you into caring about them by giving you a situation that you might relate to. They didn't yeah. do that as much in this one. I don't know. Maybe that like activism type mentality is something that people will connect to really quickly, but it, it felt very, uh, like minimal. Like it didn't really seem necessary to have such strong characters who they didn't use at all. Yeah, and it's it, it, it's the same kind of mentality. I mean, again, Trevorrow wrote the first film. He came back to write this film. It's the same kind of mentality with which you know he approached that first film. He just barely puts any effort into the characters, just enough. Like you just get the slightest touch yeah just enough and then that's it and then walks away 
hit the gas. We got to get to the next scene. We got to get to the, this thing. We got to get to that thing, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. This, I'm going to be talking about this later with uh, someone else, but I just watched Rocky the other day in mm-hmm. the first 30 minutes of Rocky. He's just walking. Like he just walks from <laughs> place to place and it feels very slow, but everything is deliberately establishing his character and his yep. relationship with the world. So when you watch that movie, you're so connected to him when things start, you know, coming into place or falling apart, you actually care. And movies yeah. don't do that anymore. They're not willing to slow down to let you feel who this character actually is. They just yeah. expect I mean, you- think about even back to the original film in 93, mm. how long it is. You know, I mean, we have the cold open, obviously, yeah. in the original film. and But I don't know how you felt about the cold open for Fallen Kingdom. I actually really loved it. Yeah. I wish the entire film would have been as great as that cold open for this film. But I think in the original film, think about how, like, you have the scene of Grant and Ellie in the desert digging up dinosaur bones. Mm. And the long, slow, deliberate scene where they discuss the raptors and all these long, drawn-out scenes, the dinner scene comes to mind. You never get to see any dinosaurs, and then for the longest time, and then finally, you get to see the Brachiosaurus. Yeah. And then it's forever again before you get to see another dinosaur. It's all characters talking. It's all characters just designed to kind of make you have conversations and make you think there's nothing like that here. Yeah. That, like literally like three minutes into this movie, it's like, we got to go to Ela Nublar and save the dinosaurs. Okay. Well, here we go. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, uh, it's, it's disappointing that, uh, flash has taken over. Like it being like a flashy spectacle has taken over it being interesting because I feel like so yeah. many movies are just following that trend. Of. I posited in our review when when uh, we recorded it yesterday. I posited that the Jurassic Park films are the new Transformers movies. Yeah, but they're dinosaurs and not robots. They yeah. have stupid plots. They're really pretty to look at, but they still have Spielberg's original film, which I think is a masterpiece hmm. to kind of look back on. And we're really, really, we, we, we're so in love with that film as a culture. Yeah, I think that you know we forgive everything that's come after a little bit because it, well, we still have that original film and you still get that little tingle of nostalgia or whatever, or that kind of memory that how you felt when Grant, so he's the first dinosaur in the film or whatever. Michael Bay never directed a Jurassic park in the transformers franchise. So all of them are garbage, (laughs) you know, it's like in this franchise, you still have that original film. And so I told my co-host Justin, I was like, we give, we give all these movies a pass time and time again for whatever reason they're the new transformers movies they really are yeah no yeah i think that's fair where it's you know there's no substance to them it's just it i don't know if this is quite as bad as transformers towards the idea of it being for an international market but it's definitely i would agree yeah low quality on the same level of uh yeah actually caring about what's happening um yeah there were two two scenes that paid homage to the original that i actually really appreciated uh Mm -hmm. which was the bronchiosaurus dying on the island where he like steps up and puts his feet in the air similar to the saddest scene of all time (laughs) yeah right because it's the exact same uh posture as when they see in the first movie i believe yep right and so it is yep and I, i was like oh that's a great uh, visual bookend of the, f- at least for the island, the main island. Like you're yep. introduced this way and you're, you're, it's sent off the same way. I thought, so that moment I really loved. And then when mm-hmm. the, the clone girl, which was interesting, but I hated the way they revealed it. Uh, when she was hiding in the kitchen from the bad guy, I can't even remember his name who was mm-hmm. falling around. That felt very much like when the Raptors were chasing the kids in the first movie. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, the, so it's kind of like, oh, the villains are now people, which, yes, I have I have some issues with that structure where they now there's good dinosaurs and bad dinosaurs, which is the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, I but, really hate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
I, I, there's I, even this scene where you know when the indoraptor is stalking her mm-hmm. you know she gets into the it's a, i guess it's a little food elevator yes and you know she's having trouble kind of if you go back to the first film where lex is in the kitchen cabinet struggling to pull down the shade same thing mm. uh in this film so that's definitely throwing some homage back at the first film yeah uh, as well yeah it's, so those little moments really i thought worked well for this movie yeah the stuff they built around it to get to those points is is what gets bad. Like the whole auction yeah. was terrible. I I wish that <laughs> wasn't a part of this movie at all. It, it didn't really, it didn't add anything. It just felt like it took up time. It took up a lot of time. Yeah, like a lot, a lot of time. And like I'm still, the logic of all of this is still 100% lost on me. You. Put yourself in the shoes of a wealthy, I don't know, whomever, and you go to the auction and your goal is to buy a dinosaur. Yeah. What on earth are you going to do with a dinosaur once you have it? Yeah. Yeah. They want you to think that (laughs) they can train them for military purposes, but we could probably train like big cats, like lions and tigers and panthers and all that stuff way more efficiently yeah. than we could train a dinosaur. And yet that's never even, nobody talks about doing that. You know, yeah. I mean, unless I don't even, I'm not even thinking about the Indo. I'm thinking about like, there's one of the dudes buys the Ankylosaur, the big armored dinosaur. Mm. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> like just hang out with it. Like, Although I, there <sighs> are more, uh, I think, what was it? There's more panthers in captivity in people's backyards in America than there are anywhere else. Like, people just own giant cats just as pets. Do you Do you not? Oh, I do. I got two of them. Good. Yeah. Whew, I, I was going to be like, ooh, boy. <laughs> I let I'm my on kids with the walk panther them. narc. <laughs> 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 let the kids walk them. Make sure they feed them beforehand so they don't get mauled. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good uh, learning lesson for them. It, it builds character. A little mauling. Never hurt anybody. Exactly. Exactly. Now you know to feed him beforehand. <laughs> um, what did you think about the clone uh, storyline? Terrible. Did you? I I appreciated the idea of it because that's definitely where this technology would go. But everything. It's, what, it's exactly what you said, though. It's not revealed. And it goes. it All of this goes back to Javaro's script because all of this stuff is rushed through. You introduce Mm. Cromwell's character, Benjamin Lockwood, who started this whole genetic cloning of dinosaurs thing with John Hammond way a long time ago before the first film. And, you know, you drop these little nuggets in the film of his daughter died and now he's raising his granddaughter. This is his granddaughter, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. There's the one thing where she finds the picture and mm-hmm. whatever, but they don't spend enough time investing you in these characters for us to care. Yeah. Who cares if she's a, it doesn't matter. You don't make us care about her as an audience, you know? Yeah. She's good too. As a kid, as like a scared kid, I, I think that she is probably more effective as, as the scared kid in a dinosaur movie. Uh, than anybody in any of the sequels since the original. Yes. I think definitely better than Goldblum's daughter in two. <laughs> the uh, gymnast. Well, the, yeah, the gymnast. Yeah. The kid in three was, you know, slinging around bottles of T-Rex B. And then, you know, the kids in Jurassic World were pfft, whatever. Yeah. They were, so I, I think wish they would have gotten She's me. great for that. But, I mean, at, at the same time, it's like, you know, you don't give her any real any real kind of plot, like maybe we could have had some more flashbacks in there, saw, you know, how this whole thing affected them. Like they, they wanted to drop these little teases, these little Easter eggs about, oh, there was a rift between Lockwood and, and Hammond and, oh, what happened between them and blah, blah, blah. But then you immediately floor the gas into another scene of, you know, Chris Pratt and, you know, trying to chase a dinosaur down or do whatever. Like you don't, you've got to let this stuff simmer. You've got to just let it slowly kind of build up. You can't just throw it in there and then boom, jump off to the next thing. That's not how good writing works in film. Yeah. Yeah. They should have, they they reveal a lot about Chris Pratt and his relationship with blue from computer files, which Mm -hmm. I still don't really understand why they were so easily accessible 
every time they came up, they just seemed kind of strange, <laughs> like convenient. But those should yeah, have. Why, why were they just ready to play every time? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, those should have been uh, the cloning. That's that's really where the cloning stuff should have been revealed. Not yeah. Chris Pratt and Blue, but having like failed clone experiments and all this stuff, because that's, I mean, it's an interesting idea of cloning people versus cloning dinosaurs, what's right, what's wrong, with all that stuff where you, there's a lot of depth to uh, to explore with that. Not that yeah. they do any of that. They don't, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure one of the lines um, was, do you know what she is? She's a clone. She like, yeah, it was like, that's how they reveal it in the film. Yeah. yeah. And it's just so, <laughs> so terrible. Um, what did you think of the idea of her releasing the dinosaurs at the end? Because they also deserve humanity the same way she does. I, I, we all get it. Trevorrow. We understand the theme you're going for. Cause you deliver it with the subtlety and grace of a sledgehammer. <laughs> Fine every life's important like i get it but the if you think about the logistics of this like all these giant dinosaurs are now loose hanging out in the woods of california yeah. all right so they're just the animals and what's going to happen say like it, it it and i'm not saying that i wanted them to have this discussion in the film either because it would have ground things even more to a halt than half of the things in the film do but you know, think about, like, say the first time a Brachiosaur decides to lumber its way through somebody's town and step on a few houses, kill a few kids. Yeah. Strolls its way through a school, you know. Well, you're not going to just go grab your shotgun and kill it. You know, you can't just go hunt it and get rid of it. So, you know, you're going to have, like, tanks and everything. And I can't wait for the third film because I guarantee you this is the kind of stuff we're going to see. It's like tanks like chasing dinosaurs through the woods and shooting them with tank shells and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, how do you like, there's no dinosaurs and people, they, they don't coexist. And that's the entire point. That's literally the theme of all these movies, mm -hmm. all of them, people and dinosaurs do not mix. It's a, it's a volatile, bad combination. So now you've unleashed them into the world at large where they can multiply. And I mean, literally like, how do you keep, how do you keep a, like, 30 foot thick like 150 foot tall dinosaur out of you know off of main street you know yeah like you don't it like the, the logistics of it are maddening <laughs> and like it's it's done with the best of intentions but like seriously you're gonna have like f-16s hunting the t-rex now in the woods and shooting it with freaking missiles yeah you know because oh it wandered into this one town these kids were playing soccer and it gobbled up three or four of yeah. them you know, that's the kind of thing that you're going to have now. And it's going to be like, is that what the third movie is going to be? I don't necessarily know that I want to see that movie. I mean, it would be cool to look at, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, it's just I mm. was beyond the idea of them just being free and killing people, which is a, it's an obnoxious idea of like they deserve to live. But everyone they kill, they're going to kill that. That's just a product of them you know, deserving to yeah. live, like who cares that that idea is maddening. But the, what frustrated me was I felt like Bryce Dallas Howard had this really strong moment of deciding what to do because her whole mission Which was, I loved. yeah, her whole mission was we need to save them. We need to keep them alive. And then she has this moment where she can do it. Chris Pratt was like, hey, you, you, gotta, you gotta think about what you're doing here. If you do this, we can't yeah, undo it. There's no going back. And, yeah, it's Pandora's box, basically. Yeah. And she's just like, she decides, all right, I'm just going to watch them die, basically. I'm going to watch them die this horrible death. And I thought leaving a choice in the hands of your character where it was there was no clear option was such a powerful moment. And then they took it all away, which is what I feel, yeah. you know, like it happened a ton in uh, The Last Jedi where these characters like Kylo Ren was about to kill his mom. Someone else did it for him. Uh, uh, Finn. This is the, uh, this is the uh, Thanos almost kills Tony Stark in the infinity war moment. And then they snatch that back. Yeah. Too, you know? Yeah. Every, every decision that would make you question a character, they just take away. It's and here's another, here's a Justin. And I talked about this last night when we reviewed the film on our show, but whatever happened to site B, 
there's uh, still dinosaurs on site B. Last we knew in Jurassic Park three, tons of dinosaurs wandering around on site B. They're all there. So why are we so concerned with saving the dinosaurs from Ila Nublar and not just like, well, there's another island with dinosaurs on it that's just a few clicks away. Why don't we just throw them right over there? Yeah. You know, is that like whatever happened to site B? Like the whole conversation in this film is about how these unextinct animals are now going to go extinct again because this volcano is going to erupt. Well, but what about all the other dinosaurs on site B? It, is Jurassic Park three still canon? Because they both are. They just don't everything because they because there was a yeah, T Rex that World, ran around Los An- or San Diego, I think, and was yep, like, "Yep, that was the one from uh, from Site B." So that's like if you think about it, really, like the whole argument in this film is completely moot because there's a whole other island full of dinosaurs. Like yeah. those films are still canon. It's just Jurassic world takes place on the original Island. So there's not really any need to reference the themes or anything from the, or the second and third film. There's no reason to go back to those Yeah, because the first film deals with Ela Nublar and Jurassic world deals with Ela Nublar. Mm-hmm. But in this film, like the, what happened to say B? <clears throat> yeah. What, the, the dinosaurs all just uh just just did they all just walk off into the ocean one day and we're like no we're done we're done with this <laughs> it was a separate volcano peace yeah right <laughs> yeah, there was also a volcano on that island <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why no people live there it's not a safe like it kind place of removes live. if you if you remember in this universe that there's a whole other island full of dinosaurs that when did jurassic park 3 get released 2001 I don't so know. Yeah, maybe literally for 14 years, there's just dinosaurs just doing their thing on this other island was just flourishing. Was the other island that he was talking about, the bad guy was talking about in this, was that site B? Yeah. All they talk about, of course, we know the sanctuary was just smoke and mirrors, yeah, but yeah. they never mention it as such. They just say sanctuary island. Okay. Which I even think, I even think. That you could have had a 10 second throwaway couple of lines like it's site B, it's Ila Sorna, the other island full of dinosaurs. That's where we're going to take them. Or, you know, somebody just asks the question, why don't we just take them to the other island full of dinosaurs? Oh, all those dinosaurs are dead because reason. Yeah, there wasn't enough like, food or they something along those lines that it wasn't habitable literally, for them anything yeah. like aliens came down and kidnapped all of them in spaceships <laughs> and took them off to an alien zoo somewhere oh man I whatever hope, the case may be i hope that's the case i hope we get an alien really predator do. jurassic park <laughs> crossover movie right <laughs> it's just it completely removes like the entire point of this film is we unextincted them and now they're going to go extinct again yeah so now we have to save them but like like, like there's a whole other island just full of dinosaurs Full of dinosaurs, you know. Like yeah. I don't know. What did you think of Jeff Blo- Goldblum's character and his stance? Waste. On just letting them uh, that they should just die. That there should be no intervention. That it was a mistake said, to bring them back. I. Well, yeah. I, first of all, I think he was wasted. Yeah, honestly, glorified cameo, just nonsense. But then. I said to Justin last night when we were reviewing the film, I said, I really want to live in the world of the Jurassic Park movies. I want that government to be our government now because the U.S. government just hyper intervenes in literally everything. But in the movie, they're like, nah, no, you guys deal with it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I love that. Frankly, that's just me. But I I agree with Goldblum. I, I agree with him. Yeah, Like I said, even especially when you throw site B into the equation, but even if you don't, I agree with Claire's decision at the end of the film, because again, the whole point of all these movies, all five of them together is that dinosaurs and people don't mix. Think of Grant's quote in the first film, you throw dinosaurs and humans, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution back into the mix together. You know, nobody has any idea what's going to happen. And and the movie's, Literally, if there is a prominent theme in any of these movies, it's dinosaurs plus people equals no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I completely agree with her decision in this film because I, I agree with that. And then it's like you said, the film just yoink, snatches it away. Yeah. 
What did you? What's your opinion about the good dinosaurs versus the bad dinosaurs? Because I terrible. Feel, I, I agree with you 100. <laughs> percent I feel like the issue that that stems from is actually the original movie, where the T Rex was chasing them, and then the Raptors show up and attack the T Rex. But that happened because it was just kind of a natural thing, you know? Like it makes sense almost. Like oh, they probably they might fight, but it wasn't the T or the Velociraptors trying to protect the people. It just, yeah. it just was a coincidence. But now in all these movies, the T-Rex is always a good guy. The Velociraptors are mostly good guys. And they seem like they have motivations to protect the people. And it's so stupid. Yeah, it's like, uh, listen, I don't care. Like, And they, they go at great lengths even still in the little videos that you were talking about before with the little baby blue uh, mm. to show that. You know, they even have a, a one of the other raptors. I can't remember what, what the other name was of know. the other raptor, but they, they show like Chris Pratt's like Delta, I think. Yep, you're right. And Chris Pratt, quote unquote, shows weakness, like feigns weakness, and yeah. the raptor immediately attacks him. And then they go to great lengths to point out that Blue like tries to cuddle up to him and nuzzle up to him and be like, listen, the first time it's an animal, bottom line. Yeah. The first time that animal gets hungry, I don't care how sweet and nuzzly they are instincts going to kick in and take over. And I really wish that these films would go to that point at some point, but they don't ever like the, they, they they don't even seem like even when the Raptor attacks the bad guys in this film, does it even seem to be eating them or is it just attacking them to kill them, to save the people, to protect the people like you said? Yeah. You know, I'm trying to remember on the Island. He blew is calm and then they show up. Why does he attack that guy? It's something, something happens that like sets him off and he's like, he needs to protect himself. Yeah. And it's but not, all he does is attack the guy. Like we don't see him like eating him. Yeah. Cause he should have been able to kill that soldier instantly. I would imagine if that was yeah. his intention and he, the guy had time to shoot him. Yeah. So it's like, <sighs> <laughs> it's all dumb, man. I, uh, yeah. I enjoyed this movie way more than I expected. And I think that kind of tainted my opinion of the movie. Uh, but the yeah. more I think about it, the worse and worse it becomes. I think the one thing, one thing saves this movie and it's J.A. Bayona. I, I think that, like I said, the the direction in this film, I think is the best since Spielberg. And I think the cinematography in this film is beyond good. Hmm. It really, really is even more beautiful than than Jurassic World was. Way more beautiful. Trevorrow just does not have the eye that Bayona has. Clearly, he also can't write to save his life. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> and like, I mean, I I love the way that they use darkness, especially the second half of the film. I love the shots on the island of the volcano erupting, even though you cannot outrun pyroclastic flow. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely tweeted directly at Colin Trevorrow a link to the Wikipedia page that explains what pyroclastic flow is. After the scene on the island where Chris Pratt's character gets swallowed up by the volcanic ash that's billowing down the mountain. Yeah. N- no, he's going to get incinerated alive because there's hot gas in there that's up to like a thousand degrees. Yeah. He's dead. He <laughs> is dead. <laughs> A thousand times over, he's dead. He didn't just randomly wind up in the river and still... No, stop it. Chris Pratt's not fireproof. Maybe Chris Pratt died there, and that was a clone that found the (laughs) the ball. It's two different characters. There's actually been five different Chris Pratt's, but it's just clones, and we don't don't realize It is entirely possible. Because they had to keep feeding the other ones to the raptors because... Yeah, yeah. every time Blue killed one of the Chris Pratt's, they just brought out another uh, Chris Pratt. Blue killed it again. Uh. <laughs> yeah, like that, like... I like it. But this film is beautifully shot. I love the way that they move the camera mm. in a lot of these scenes. It's not something that you normally see in this kind of a Jurassic sequel. Yeah. Like, I, Justin even pointed this out to me yesterday, but one of the really, really nice scenes is when the Indo is up on the roof and then the camera kind of swings up over top of the dinosaur and goes upside down into the bedroom. Like just the way that the camera moves, there's a lot of scenes like that in this film that don't really feel like they're shot to look like a Jurassic film. And I think 
that's the one saving grace of this film. If not for that, I would have hated it even more than I did. If this were yeah. shot like Trevorrow shot Jurassic World, I would have hated it even more. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the Indoraptor as the uh, the the villain dinosaur? <sighs> It was fine. Yeah. Like it was, it was okay, but it was been there, done that. Like we already saw you do a genetic hybrid with the Indominus in the last film. Like you, you can't just keep like what's, what's going to be in the next movie, the uh, Triceraptor or whatever. They're going to have a <laughs> raptor, but it's going to have giant oh, horns and a big so. faceplate thing. That'd be awesome. Like, I mean, come on. Like, I mean, just. <sighs> It just it like it was been there, done that. Yeah. Like, and the film doesn't even really get to the endo until like two thirds of the way through, so it doesn't even really like feel like it matters as much as the Indominus. The Indominus, of course, was the whole point of that first film. Yeah, uh, in, in this new trilogy, anyway. And yeah, it just eh, it was fine. Yeah. Like, it wasn't great or anything but i didn't really have a, like a huge problem with it It just it just felt tired it just felt like all right what's gonna happen next can we get this over with please yeah yeah well that was the thing about the first one too is all the dinosaurs were threats you know you the um the t-rex the velociraptors the dinosaur that spit stuff the little baby yep. dinosaurs the the small ones I, I don't know any of their names but everything was kind of a threat um, yep. like they, all the characters had to pay attention, like, oh, these are wild animals that could just try to kill us for whatever reason. Where in yep. these latest movies, it seems like there is the villain dinosaur and that's the only yeah. threat. They're movie monsters now. Yeah. They're not, they're not dinosaurs anymore. They're movie monsters. This started way back in, I mean, Jurassic Park 2 kind of but especially in jurassic park 3 the spinosaurus 100 percent movie monster yeah. and we've never gone back yeah we've never gone back the indominus movie monster and then in this film the indo movie monster it just it, this is this is where we're going with these things this is just with the way that they're going to keep going yeah you know which is disappointing to you in the third film in this new trilogy we're going to have a scene because that original t-rex I, I i guarantee at some point will die it, and it should <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be like this the sad, sad music is going to play, like maybe the Jurassic Park, the original Jurassic Park theme and like a piano and Chris Pratt will be there like cuddling the T-Rex's head as it sighs its last breath or whatever. Like I it, I guarantee you like that's it's the gonna, kind of thing they've built up this T-Rex as such a good guy dinosaur now. Yeah. He's going to be you know? saving a busload of children, but the government <laughs> thinks he's trying to kill them. So they have to they shoot him with a, a Black Hawk and destroy him. So he, yeah, they could just clone the other kids anyway. <laughs> but, uh, well, anything else about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Please hire someone else to write the third film. I, I was hoping that it, this was the end. When they got to, when Bryce Dallas yeah, Howard right. decided not to release them, I was like, oh, wow, this, they're just going to end it. Like, they, they closed the door on the island. Everything that's connected to Jurassic Park is gone. And they're just, this is it. And I was like, so... In, into that like finally a franchise is willing to just close the door leave on a decent note and you know walk away from it and then that stupid yeah. girl had to open the door and just let them go and murder everyone in whatever town they're in see what it is what it is is she works for paramount the no not paramount it's uh, in universal she works yeah. for universal and <laughs> She was like, no, there's way too much money to be made here. <laughs> so flips open that little switch. Boop. There goes all of our franchise money running out the door. Now we got to go chase them down and make more movies about them. <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. of the villains in movies nowadays seem to reflect the uh, movie studios who are making the movies. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It just... I. I gave this movie a, a generous, a generous five out of ten on our show. Yeah, and I, I can't recommend it. That's that's my that's my highest failing grade for a movie. I can't recommend it. I do think Bayona did an amazing job shooting this film. I think it is now. It has replaced Prometheus in my heart as the shiniest piece of turd <laughs> there could possibly be. <laughs> It, it's it's a beautiful looking piece of garbage. That's yeah. what it is. the The plot is so bad, so bad in this movie. Just just 
turn off the sound and just look at the pretty pictures. Yeah, that's fair. That's all you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> the dialogue is all pretty terrible. Everything that they do <sighs> to move things forward is awful. I really didn't like the uh, the Zia and Francis character. I thought they were terrible. I really one note. disliked Just yeah. one note. And I was confused why Zia, like I get it, she's a strong woman character and that's great and all, but she's like standing down dinosaurs and soldiers with guns in her face and nobody is that brave consistently. Well, how about- She should have broken about, down at least one point. <laughs> Even behind the scene, she should have been like, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> but right. never, never show weakness because she's- a female strong character, so she can't have any weakness, yeah. which is super my favorite boring. thing. My favorite thing about her character is she's a paleo veterinarian. Yes. You've never seen a dinosaur before. Yep. How on earth are you qualified to work on a living dinosaur if you've never seen one? You can't just read about dinosaur anatomy in a book and just suddenly know how to do whatever with them. Yeah. Like, it'll probably get, sort of help you, whatever. Fine. And then the most ridiculous scene in this movie, I think, is in, in Owen, he was in the Navy before, mm -hmm. but he is an animal trainer. Now, he trains dinosaurs, goes totally commando. It's a scene right out of a superhero movie where he beats the crap out of like a dozen big buff huge security guards with guns yeah. at that auction yeah. like it's this whole extended sequence where he just throws down and beats the crap out of a whole bunch of just massive dudes yeah. Be okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i literally lifted out of a comic book movie it's it's like this is the age that we're in we've got to just have big dumb action sequences and it doesn't matter how much sense they make yeah People who choreograph fights now and write fights need to get punched in the face at least one time before they're allowed to do it. So they understand that uh, that's not the way anything works. <laughs> like, I get it. He was in the military and, you know, I mean, he's an animal trainer. He's a fit guy. Mm -hmm. You know, fine. He's building his own cabin, you know, whatever. But, but he's not just taking out a whole you know, a room full of security guards. He's not just taking out a whole bunch of dudes. Yeah. Also who are equally as fit and trained most likely yeah, right? as he is like, I but, see, I figure that they have the same trainer that the asset containment unit in Jurassic world had because they were also woefully inept at their jobs. <laughs> so I feel like after that guy trained the asset containment unit and they failed dismally, he was like, well, I'm going to train these mercenaries now instead. And yeah, they're, they are as terrible at their job. Yeah. So, uh, <sighs> yeah, no, this, yeah, it's, uh, I think it, if you want to see it, then see it. It's, you're not going to miss anything if you don't with this movie. If you love the first yeah. Jurassic world, you'll probably really like this one. But if you were disappointed by the first one and missed the uh, style of the original, then this one's just going to continue to disappoint. You will always miss the style of the original because no Jurassic movie will ever, ever, ever touch it. And they continue to prove over and over that they have no idea how to recapture even the slightest sliver of that magic. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know what the issue is because I don't know if it's because what people talk about, are the moments like the T-Rex chasing the kids or what all, whatever. But the, the moments that people remember are impactful because they spend so much time making you care about the characters. So you have characters that are special to you in a dangerous situation. And now it seems like they're only worried about hitting those dangerous situations that people will talk about. And they're not interesting if you don't care about the characters at all. Yep. <laughs> Well, Greg, what, simple as that. When's the last movie? What's the last movie you saw that you actually cared about the characters on screen? A Quiet Place. Yeah, that's probably A Quiet Place, and it doesn't even have any dialogue for the most part. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know that movie. It one hundred percent invests you in the world that those characters live in. Yes, so that you feel that fear that they feel whenever they make a sound or whatever like yeah. that is a great movie even though they should have just moved and lived next to the freaking waterfall yeah. don't get me on that soapbox but 
<laughs> even still, I still loved that movie. Fantastic character development. Yes. Fantastic. It, 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 you don't have to do a lot of things in, the, in the film. All you have to do is just, you know, let the people, let the audience live and breathe with the characters up on the screen. You yeah. do not constantly have to throw visual noise at the audience all the time. They take like they think audiences have no attention span, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. And they think the audiences, well, it's been a minute and a half. It's like the Michael Bay school of filmmaking. Yeah. It's been a minute and a half since a huge explosion took place. We better blow something up. <sighs> no. Yeah. yeah, as soon as the as soon as a movie can get you to question, what would I do in that situation? They kind of got you. Right. That should be the first goal is how do we get the audience to be in the shoes of our character? And once you can do that, then you can abuse that character and affect the audience. But you can't just you can't just start with, you know, the abuse or the the danger. Like you have to actually feel connected to who you're watching. Otherwise, it's it doesn't matter. Exactly. (sighs) <sighs> well, how Stop, can- just get Colin Trevorrow away from this franchise, please. Just please, <laughs> I, for I'll, the love of God. I'll do my best. I'll, I'll, I'll write my senator. Yeah. It, somebody, please. <laughs> but uh, how can people find your guys' podcast? Uh, just epicfilmguys.com. It takes you right to our main host, which is Podbean. You can literally search for us on any podcatcher. Google us. We're like the first five, ten pages of results or whatever. We're we're everywhere. We're literally everywhere. So yeah, just search for us at Epic Film Guys. You'll find us. Cool. Well, thanks, Nick, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Sorry. Dude, thank th- you so much for having me. Sorry, this movie sucks so bad, but I find bad <laughs> movies are more fun to talk about sometimes. Wah, wah. <laughs> and uh, <sighs> yeah, you guys can follow us at I Seen That Pod on Twitter, and uh, we'll be back in a couple of days with our next episode.